A recent article in the Journal of the American Medical Association notes that in comparison to other developed countries, the health of children in the United States has declined significantly in several important areas during the past 17 years. In this video, I provide some key details of this alarming trend. I've included the citation for the Journal of the American Medical Association article in this chart. Note that the first four authors are researchers at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and the fifth author is a researcher at UCLA. While I don't have a medical background, I have spent more than 60 years working with scientific data, and I was very much impressed by the efforts that these researchers made to obtain the best available data for their study. The authors not only examined health data for children in the United States, but compared mortality data for US children with comparable data from the 18 most populous countries in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. These OECD nations all have universal healthcare systems so the collection of health data from them was relatively straightforward. However, this is not the case in the United States, which made data collection for U.S. children more challenging. Nevertheless, the authors used great care to obtain information that was reasonably representative for the entire United States. The first striking result presented in the article can be seen in these two charts, which show the mortality rates for infants less than one year old in the United States compared to those in the 18 OECD countries. The chart on the left shows the actual number of deaths per 100,000 infants for both populations. The good news is that mortality rates for infants have been decreasing with time, both in the US and in the OECD 18, which reflects medical advances. The bad news is that the infant mortality in the US is about 80% higher than that in the OECD 18, and that hasn't changed much over time, as is reflected in the chart on the right which shows the ratio of the US rate to the OECD 18 rate with time. These two charts from the article are particularly striking in my opinion. The chart on the left shows mortality rates for one to 19 year olds in both the US and the OECD 18 countries. Until about 2014, death rates in both populations had been declining significantly. But from 2014 on, death rates in the U.S. for this age group stopped declining and began an upward trend. This can be seen clearly in the rate ratio chart on the right. Up until about 2014, those in the 1 to 19 year old age group in the U.S had a mortality rate that was about 60% higher than those in the same age group in the OECD 18 countries. Since then, the mortality rate in the US for this age group has risen to a level that is well over twice as high as in the OECD 18 countries. These two charts from the article provide some insight into the reasons for the difference in mortality for children in the United States versus children in the OECD 18 countries. From the chart on the left, we see that in the United States, children under one year of age are significantly more likely to die from three causes compared to children in the OECD 18 countries, namely congenital anomalies, sudden unexpected infant deaths, and prematurity. Many medical and socioeconomic factors are associated with the, these three reasons for higher infant death rates in the United States, but much more research will be needed to determine what are the primary driving factors. 
The chart on the right shows that over time, two major factors, motor vehicle accidents and firearms, have been contributing to the higher death rate in the United States for children between 1 and 19 years of age. And recently, substance abuse also has been contributing somewhat more to the higher death rate of U.S. children who are between 1 and 19 years of age. The much higher death rate from firearms in the United States reflects the sharp difference in firearm ownership between the U.S. and the OCED countries. While the higher rate of deaths from motor vehicle crashes likely is related to the much larger average number of miles driven per capita in the U.S. than in the OCED countries. In addition to information about changing mortality rates for children in the U.S., the article included information about changes in chronic health conditions for children in the United States between 2011 and 2023. The article authors obtained this information from two sources, the National Survey of Children's Health and from the PEDSNET data. The National Survey of Children's Health is conducted by the U.S. Census Bureau. It, re it reports information provided by parents and other, other caregivers, while the PEDSNET data comes from healthcare professionals at 11 children's hospitals across the country. The NSCH surveys provide information on 15 chronic conditions, while the PEDSNET data include information on 97 different conditions. The results for the 15 conditions covered in both surveys are shown in this chart. Except for the data on learning disabilities, there is reasonably good agreement about these changes over time for all these 15 chronic conditions. While the rates for most of these 15 chronic conditions have worsened with time, some such as anxiety, learning disabilities, and autism have more than doubled in little more than a decade. In addition to the conditions covered in the previous chart, the authors of the article provided information from several different data sets on other child health conditions that have worsened in recent years for U.S. children. These are summarized in this chart. The blue dots represent the earlier prevalence of each condition, while the orange dots represent the later prevalence. First, let me emphasize that what I'm saying now are my personal observations following my reading of the Journal of American Medical Association article, and not necessarily the conclusions reported by the authors of the article. My first observation is that the comparisons of mortality rates for U.S. infants and children in the OECD-18 countries are particularly valuable. All the OECD-18 countries have some form of universal health care, and clearly those countries have better mortality outcomes for infants and children than does the United States, where access to health care for children and pregnant women often is limited by location and socioeconomic status. Another observation is the extraordinary number of firearm-related deaths of children in the United States versus the OECD-18 countries. Even though the rates of childhood homicide and suicide in the U.S. is only slightly higher than in the OECD-18, children in the U.S. are almost 15 times more likely to die in firearm-related incidents. This reflects both the very high rate of, of private ownership of firearms in the United States, 120 firearms per 100 people, compared to the rest of the world, as well as relatively lax regulations in the U.S. for the safe storage of firearms. The high rate of traffic accident-related deaths in the U.S. versus the OECD-18 countries likely is related to a combination of factors, including the wide availability of public transportation options 
in many but not all of the OECD 18 countries, which reduces the number of miles driven per capita, which in turn is a major factor in traffic accident fatality rates. The fact that the mortality rate from all causes for U.S. children in the 1 to 19 year old group has been rising significantly in recent years should be a major concern. It's also clear from the information presented in the article that the prevalence of many chronic childhood health conditions has been increasing with time here in the United States. Unfortunately, the article did not include comparison data for changes in the rate of these chronic conditions in other developed countries, such as those in the OECD 18. Comparisons of that nature would help to isolate factors that are unique to the United States healthcare system. Also, I have one minor caution. The two data points in the previous chart on how the prevalence of physical conditions has changed over time con comes from PEDSNET, which is not a national database, so there's a small chance that it might not be representative of the U.S. as a whole. In conclusion, it should be clear from the results pre presented here that there has been serious decline in the overall health of children in the United States in the past two decades. This should be a major concern not only for parents, but for all Americans, including our legislators. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have found it informative. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments section of the video and I will do my best to respond.